Let's take a look now at the history of China's ambitious space program. And President Xi has made advancements in space technology a priority for Beijing. So far, the program has launched more than 200 satellites, 10 spacecrafts, one moon rover, and one experimental space station, all since 1976. China's first manned space flight launched in 2003. Since then, the program has advanced quickly. The Tiangong-1, a prototype space laboratory, launched in 2011, laying the groundwork for China's space docking technology and a limited number of scientific experiments. The next stage of the space technology will focus on putting a permanent manned space station into service by 2022. And for more on China's space program, we're joined by Yang Yuguang, a professor for the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. Thanks for joining us, Professor. Good evening. China is getting ready to launch Tiangong-2, its second experimental space laboratory. This is all part of a broader plan to have a permanent manned space station in service around 2022. Why is the space station so important to China? Uh, well, you see, a permanent residence in space is a goal of human beings, not only for China, but also for, for other countries all over the world. We can do many experiments in space, and it is necessary for <coughs> human beings to go even further beyond the Earth's orbit. Uh, for you see, the United States and other countries have a joint uh, uh, mission of the ISS. Uh, they can test many uh, uh, experiments on board this station and do many things for the preparation works for the future uh, missions to Mars and other celestial bodies in in, uh, the solar system. And for China, uh, the future space station will be recognized as a national level uh, laboratory uh, in space. And in this space station, we can have many uh, scientific research in, uh, experiments uh, which will benefit the national uh, na economy and also for other uh, meaningful scientific research goals. And also, uh, this is very good for the future preparation for the, for the potential human missions to uh, the moon and other satellite like the uh, like the Mars. All right, let's break it down a little. Let's get into the details. What are the main differences between Tiangong-2, which is getting ready to launch, and the first space lab launched in 2011, Tiangong-1? You may notice that we call Tiangong-1 the target spacecraft or the target vehicle. This is because the major goal of Tiangong-1 is to test the rendezvous and the docking technologies. Uh, China has not mastered these technologies before. Uh, so uh, the major task of Tiangong-1 is to dock with Shenzhou-8, Shenzhou-9, and Shenzhou-10 spaceships. We have uh, successfully uh, performed six dockings uh, for manual docking and automatic docking, and also uh, in all conditions, such as those in the uh, shadow area and in the sunlight areas to test whether this uh, technology has been mastered in all conditions. Uh, so uh, after these uh, missions, we, have can, we can say now that we've already uh, mastered the rendezvous and the docking technology, which is necessary for future construction of the space station. For, so this time, uh, the major task of Tiangong-2 has been changed to many uh, scientific research experiments. Uh, these uh, scientific uh, research experiments are also very critical and important for the future space station. For instance, the midterm stay in space of the astronaut, uh, because in the future, the astronaut will stay in the station. Ex every expedition team will stay there uh, to expect it to stay there for about half a year. So this time, the, uh, the two male astronauts will stay in Tiangong-2 for a month to uh, test the corresponding technologies. And also, uh, next year, the, the, the China's first cargo ship, Tianzhou-1, uh, will dock with uh, also uh, Shenzhou, uh, will dock with this Tiangong-2 lab laboratory to test the refueling technology, which also are very essential for building a space station. All right, well, you mentioned that the astronauts are going to be there for about 30 days. They're carrying out some key experiments, as you said, related to space physics and aerospace medicine. Do you know specifically what they're trying to achieve? Well, uh, these experiments are very important and very interesting. For instance, the uh, ultra, uh, ultra cold uh, atomic clock, which is uh, very accurate and even more accurate and than the currently used atomic clocks on board China's uh, Beidou navigation satellites. If, uh, if the experiment will be successful, uh, it will be help the uh, navigation satellite system to uh, greatly increase its uh, uh, performance. And for the quantum science, you know that China has just launched the most of Misha, 
Mars a quantum science experimental satellite uh, last month. And this time, we also have some uh, corresponding uh, payload on board the Tiangong 2, uh, which also uh, test the uh, quantum key distribution technology, which will ensure a very safe and uh, encrypted key distribution uh, for communications. And maybe uh, this will be more practical in the future, I believe. And also, China has some uh, interesting uh, microgravity fluid test. Uh, this is kind of test we can have better understanding of the behavior of fluid in microgravity, uh, which also very, uh, sorry, which also very critical uh, for future material uh, manufacturing in space. Well, you talk about these practical applications. So how exactly will the work being done there translate into commercial applications back here on Earth? And then how long before we see any of that becoming relevant to ordinary people? Well, uh, for manned space program, I should emphasize that the return rate is very high. For instance, the Apollo program in 1960s, um, there are many analyses about the return rate. Uh, the lowest ratio is 6 to 1. That means that uh, $1 invested on Apollo program, there will be have a reward more than $6. Uh, dollars. Uh, commonly, we have analysis of about rate of uh, 10 to 12. Uh, this time, uh, Ms. Wu Ping, the uh, announcer of the China Manned Space Agency, has also announced that the return rate of China's manned space program is more than 10 to 12. To one. So uh, we have a lot of technologies which can benefit our common life. But I should also emphasize, although we have some direct transfers, such as the uh, diaper for babysitters and also the uh, the vegetables in the instant noodles, but these are the, these uh, are the not a major return of the uh, manned space uh, technologies. Uh, most of the return and uh, and benefits come from the indirect transfers. All right, thank you so much, Yang Yiguang, professor for the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation.